Nebohang Peko, Senior Researcher or Research Fellow at the Trade Collective Think Tank, now joins us uh, for more reflections on the life of Robert Mangali Sosobukwe. And Lebohang joins us via our video link. Lebohang, thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us uh, here on uh, the late edition. Of course, uh, we saw the PAC uh, today launching um, their year-long Robert Sobukwe centenary uh, celebrations. What, maybe let's start off here. Why is it so important for us as a nation to reflect, especially on the struggle heroes who played such an important uh, part in our liberation today? I think for the sake of historical context, for the sake of a broad and all-encompassing view of who was and was not import, important and involved and central to the history and the her story of this country, because every story, a story that is half told is a story not told at all. Uh, and I also think that because of the contribution that he has made, that many have spoken about, but I don't, under, I don't think we understand fully the import and the impact of that legacy. So from leading the defiance campaign campaign as a member of what was then the ANC Youth League with people like AP Mda and Antoine Mlembede um, and later on people like AP Nwabo who were the first, uh, the first well, part of the first cohort of what became the PAC. This anti-pass campaign was actually a call against the political economy uh, of black labor, of African labor. It was a rehumanization of African people who had to that, up to that point be, 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 been determined determined and been defined by this tiny little book, the Dom Pass. And then it was also the day in which the day and the, the incident that brought to light and in a, on a macro level, on a global scale, the atrocity, the genocide, the Holocaust that was taking place on African people in this country, in South Africa, and gave a lot of inspiration to other anti-imperial you know, anti movements across the world. And as a result of this and the pressure that was brought to bear by this act, Action, um, and the horrible atrocity of the 69 people who were shot at Sharpville and many more who were shot at Langa in, in Western Cape. Um, then the support pressure for the removal of South Africa, the apartheid state from the United Nations, from the Commonwealth League of Nations, um, and eventually gave the world what is now problematically, but importantly called um, International Human Rights Day. Yeah. Um, and then bear in mind also that this was also um, a lot of the work of, of, of that Sobukwe's movement. So I think for the sake of not erasing yeah. um, parts of the African, the South African liberation story, his story must be centered. And Lewang, you speak about so many important moments uh, in South Africa's history. I mean, you speak of Sharpville, the anti-pass uh, uh, laws or uh, protests uh, in uh, this country, very significant uh, to uh, South Africa and the story of uh, the people of uh, this country you know speaking about uh, those moments do you think that enough is being done to speak of the story of uh, Robert Mangaliso Sobukwe and to remember his legacy and his contributions to South Africa uh, the quick answer is obviously a no. Uh, the fact that we don't even have a trace of his voice uh, almost 30 years post 1994 is just egregious. Uh, it, it's one thing for it to, for his voice for him to have been remade to have been made and to have been muted and to have been um, voiceless before 1994. But there would have been, I think, uh, so there should be a project to excavate his voice. And even if we never get a, his audible voice, yeah, we never hear it um, audibly, we should be able to wrestle with his ideas, wrestle with his beliefs, wrestle with his ethics, wrestle with his relationship with the mayor's or Denis Sobokwe, whom, as we know, passed uh, away in 2018, a very, also another important erased figure and they were very much a unit and I think that's also very important uh, and I think that you know we have to wrestle with the fact that if if, 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 if we are going to speak about a South African story um, a liberation story an African story a pan-Africanist story it can't be in bits and pieces so it's undoubted that uh, he had not enough has been done if anything has been done to really excavate and to center and to give the respect to Ndate Sobukwe that he undoubtedly deserves. He is a giant of the liberation struggle and liberation movement. And so much of what we have today um, is because of him.
Mm, and let's take a step back and, you know, talk about uh, the man, Robert Subukwe. And, you know, why would you say that he posed such a threat uh, to the apartheid system? And I say this is because when you visit uh, the uh, uh, a Robben Island prison in Cape Robin Town, Island. he was mm. secluded uh, from all the other prisoners and he was, uh, you know, taken in his own uh, cell or one would say his own home. Why was he such a major threat uh, to the apartheid system? Exactly because of what have happened at the Sharpeville massacre at the Sharpeville at Sharpeville, because it was clear that within a year this movement and his own personal charisma had been able to galvanize the country in ways that had not been seen before. Um, at the time, I think the Institute of Race Relations in 1962 placed the opinion polls uh, in terms of popularity of liberation movements. I think the PAC was at 59 percent, the ANC was, was at about 37 percent. Um, and I think something called the Liberal Party, which would have been a precursor to the DA, would have been at about 32%. And so do the math around that. I mean, I might be, yeah, I might be slightly off, but certainly this is an illustration of how much power he had wielded within a year. In fact, that mark, the party was less than a year old. And clearly at the time, there's there are archives and there are records that say that they were fearful of the kind of force and magnetism that um, he carried. I mean, this is the apartheid Korea regime, as it were, um, fearful of the energy and of the power that that this sort of were carried, and that he had been able to galvanize not only a nation uh, and, and, and a movement, but also a pan-African and global anti-imperial movement, um, which had garnered the attention of um, international sympathizers, and had also, by the way, brought this apartheid economy to its knees. It was the apartheid economy was bankrupt in the weeks and months after, immediately following the uh, the Sharpeville massacre and it was only bailed out by uh, rescued by, by by banks in the US especially Chase Manhattan First National Bank and so on which is why there are some yeah. people who also feel that there is still a case to be answered by some of those institutions which gave financial backing and support to elongating the suffering the oppression the dispossession of African people in this country so it is no doubt that De Sobukwe was had, had done what no movement had been able to do in, in for decades um so i mean and, and i think that it was a very unfortunate that there was some uh insinuations a few years ago that the reason that that the Sobukwe was placed in this cell as this mm. in this hole as you put it was because he was some kind of a collaborator or something it was the most egregious salacious um suggestion especially from somebody for somebody who not only in their life had no voice but who even today we have not had any access to his his voice yeah. um and that the the fact that he was um, and, uh, house arrest, banishment, uh, we shouldn't underestimate the levels of depression, mental and emotional trauma, separation from families that many of our struggle icons went through. And to suggest that that was some kind of a, a holiday in is really quite a disgrace. And of course, next year he will be uh, remembered uh, through various uh, events uh, such as uh, memorial lectures uh, and of course museums and other activities that will be taking place. In your view, uh, how do you think his legacy should be preserved and uh, his name to be remembered? Oh, multiple ways. I mean, the first way that we can remember his legacy and the most, the greatest honor that we can give him is to try to imagine what his voice would be, mm. to try to imagine what his thoughts would be on on contemporary issues, to examine his readings, his writings, his works, and his thoughts. I think it's also important to 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 link those thoughts and ideas to some of the contemporary issues of today, like the political economy of land and landlessness, um, the political economy of unemployment, um, what it means to live in a settler racial capitalist state and what it means to live in the aftermath of that. And I think we also have the opportunity to remember that we are linking with different struggles across the world. Remember that the South African story is now giving a lot of languaging and, and, and a lot of inspiration to issues like the Palestinian occupation, which is, is has, that has, has now borrowed the terminology 
possibility of an apartheid uh, state and I think quite appropriately uh, and I think that this is this is an opportunity to think around what international relations would, would mean if somebody like Ndate Sobukwe's ideas had and could be embedded into the way that we relate to the global south, the majority world, the way that we relate to the rest of the world, they relate to the Africa in the diaspora. So there's a whole range, international relations, land, agrarian reform, political reform, international politics, and so forth. So there's a there's a there's a range of ways that we can begin to honor that is so book way. And I think it begins with giving uh, his voice um his voice, some, 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 some meaning, some weight, um, even though we can't hear him speak. We can hear his ideas speak. Ma'am, thank you so much uh, for your time here on SABC News uh, this evening. That is uh, Lebohang Peko. She is a senior research fellow at Trade Collective Think Tank.